Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Week Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir. So, the last place we left off, the entire gang, we're doing a little bit of a study project in the uh, library, and Lily is kind of uh, telling me to look at all the eye candy, those three cute guys and such. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Ooh, was that noise? Okay, nothing. Okay, let's jump right back into it, shall we? And here we go. <clears throat> all right. Her phone cuts off, blaring loudly. After checking the caller ID, she's standing up and heading sh heading off towards one of the aisles. I'll be back. I gotta take this phone call. Make sure things stay peaceful. I don't want to see Lucas clawing someone's eyes out, okay? I don't think I can stop any fight from breaking out if something happens, but there's only one response I can give her. It's not like I can just tell her no. I'll try my best. She flashes me a smile before dashing down the, close the closest aisle of books, her phone pressing against her head. Her loud voice echoes towards us for a few moments longer before disappearing deeper into the library. Looking towards the rest of our group, they're all staring in the direction Lily disappeared down before Lay looks back at me with his eyebrow raised. She just got a call. It seems to satisfy them because they can, they can go back to looking at their screens, still completely disconnected from each other. Reading the previous entry over again, I can't shake this feeling of melancholy this little message to her mother has. What did her mother feel when she found out her daughter killed her friends? What about when she killed herself? Did she get two calls or just one? I wonder if they were the worst calls of her life. A light pattering sound distracts me and I notice little stains on the page. I'm crying. It's not a lot, but my eyes are watering. Did my chest always feel this heavy? Maybe doing this alone is a bad idea. Maybe. Without any warning, I'm suddenly being pulled against something firm. There isn't even time for me to react before being lifted off of my seat and enveloped in heated cocoon. <laughs> Feeling any better? Oscar, what are you doing? I can't stop myself from looking around the room in a panicked frenzy. When I finally see Lay, Lee and Lucas gazing, when Lucas's gaze is focusing on us, I can't stop the sinking feeling in my stomach. Lucas's eyes are wide and his ears are standing erect. Whatever Oscar did, it's clear that he didn't expect it. Lee's shaking his head, and I think I can make out a sigh, but surprisingly, he doesn't look upset. In fact, he's smiling. Cheer up! You're sitting on the best seat in the house! What does that mean? Unless... Looking down, I understand why everyone's reacting the way they are. Oscar's now sitting in my chair with me sitting on one of his knees instead of somewhere more unsavory, much to my prayers. What are you... why? Despite sitting on his lap, I can still look straight up and see Oscar's face in its entirety. He's wearing his typical smile, but the rest of his expression surprises me. It's not the cocky expression I've been expecting, or even one filled with over-optimistic over cheer, but instead, it's concern that's covering his face. <laughs> Papa Bear over there told me you could cheer you, told me to come cheer you up. Said he saw you crying. His beautiful blue eyes are an ocean of worry, and there's a snap of pain in my chest at the thought that everyone might be worried about me. But most of all, the surprise is flooding through my head. Lee told you to come? Of course! What's so strange about that? I will say, back home, I'm known for my big smiles. I just didn't think he'd... Looking towards Lee, he's still watching us, though he looks to be trying to hide it. He's not doing a very successful job because even Lucas is looking at him with concern like he's expecting a bomb to explode. Explore. <laughs> a bomb to explore. Explore that bomb. You don't think he'd choose someone like... You didn't think he'd choose someone like me. That's not what I meant. That fishes out a laugh that rumbles through his chest. The feeling vibrates through me, and it's relaxing. Despite the embarrassment, this seating arrangement is extremely comfortable. He said I'd be the best choice to cheer you up if I take any of my clothes off. That Blah, let me try that again. He said that I'd be the best choice to cheer you up, and if I take any of my clothes off, that he'd break my arm. There's a beat of silence between us, but Oscar's smiling face is unfaltering. I don't think he means it. Despite the wetness lingering around my eyes, a laugh pushes out of my throat. It's hoarse, but it makes Oscar's smile grow all the same. Thanks. I think I needed that. Of course you did. Everyone needs some Oscar in them. Were you always this shameless and I'm just noticing, or are you going even harder? Hmm, <laughs> harder, you say? He smiles at my phrasing and waggles his eyebrows towards me. Whatever the answer is, it's clear that Oscar's no longer trying to hide his flirting, if he ever had been. Too much? I can tone it back. Flirting fun, but I don't make you uncomfortable, man. Flirting is fun, but... I but I don't want to make you uncomfortable, man. A few spelling errors in this, or lack of some words. Like, that right there should be flirting is fun. Yep. 
just if the creators watch this at all, just uh, just showing you uh, little things that I notice. I am almost lost for words there myself. Maybe a little. Sitting on your lap like this is a bit demeaning. And just like that, he lifts me up with little effort and plops me down on the chair. Without missing a beat, he takes a seat next to me. There's a part of me that misses the warmth, but more so, I feel more comfortable. I'm not used to so much physical affection, and as much as I enjoyed the attention, it's a little too overwhelming. Did it help you get your mind off whatever was bothering you? He looks real messed up. There's the Oscar I remember from the first day. The handsome stranger who saw someone in distress and decided to help. He's got a weird way of doing it, and he often hides behind flirting, but it wouldn't be him without it. <laughs> the diary just got me thinking about my mom. We're a bit close, but this is making me think we should try to be closer. The smile never leaves his face in the usual Oscar fashion, but his eyes widen in surprise. It's only a small amount, but anything other than his usual smug happy aura stands out with immense prominence. Are you close with yours? With anyone else, I'd be worried this might be a bad thing to ask, but with Oscar, I feel like I can tell him anything and he'll be okay with it. Everything about him is always screaming, ask me anything. He proves my assumption correct, as only his eyebrow raises, giving his face a curious tint like the fact that I asked, like to ask is more amusing than the question itself. I'm not sure which part caught his attention, but it seems to have interested him. We're not super close. We're family and I love Ma and Pa, but we don't talk often. We call every couple weeks. Uh, don't look so down about it, bro. It's just how we are. I feel closer to the swim team than I do my folks. I know it's not my family or my life, but something about that just makes me very sad. I don't even notice my ears are drooping until Oscar starts to ruffle my head fur, causing me to squirm and giggle. You're a strange dude, Wallace. Huh? People don't really ask me things. Well, they don't normally ask about me. They typically just ask me to do things. To them, mostly. What about Selwyn? You guys look like good friends. He chuckles at that and is filled with fondness. A warmth that only comes with familiarity. Like he's thinking about someone he cares about more than just a simple friend. It must be a lot closer than I thought. Memories of Marcus suddenly flood, suddenly come flooding back, and I have to force myself to push them away. I can't think of that right now. It's in the past, and I gotta focus on the now, right? Selwyn's great, but he doesn't talk a lot. We don't talk about our feelings often. It brings the mood down. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. With emotion so fluid and sharp that it has to be practiced, he wraps around the back of my chest and, pull, and pulls me forward, forcing me to slouch. In the next moment, Oscar's leaning forward and our faces are only inches apart. His eyes are half-lidded and his smile is more of a smirk. I know he'll play innocent, if I point it out, but the sensuality of his expression causes blood to rush to my face. My breath hitches and comes out with a shudder. His eyes glow and shimmer like the ocean we just passed by this morning. It's a shame that we don't have better lighting in the library, but those eyes would sparkle in the sun. I'm cheering you up, so don't worry about it, okay, man? Right, uh, okay. I'm trying to think of anything else to say, but I can't stop myself from being hyper-aware of just how close to his face is, is to mine. A glimmer catches my eye, and I see Oscar's blue teardrop necklace swaying back and forth under his chin, the light bouncing off of it like a mirror. It looks truly beautiful. I know it's a touchy subject, so I won't ask why he wears it. Not yet, at least. But I am still curious about it. He's such an open book in most aspects that it's strange he's keeping this single thing such a mystery. It must be something really impactful to him. It's really beautiful. Ah, hmm, hmm. Sorry about that. Wallace, oh, oh, Wallace got a little bit of Oscar in him. Well, not yet. <laughs> it's really beautiful. Him, me or the necklace? That catches me off guard, and I can't help but let out a little laugh. He joins in the in in the distance between us. Doesn't have as much tension anymore. Both good and bad. Oh, Lee, stop messing up our fun. Back it up, you two. Lee's voice has an out-of-character tone of amusement flooding through his voice, and when I look over towards him, it's clear that neither Lucas or Lee are, focusing on, Lee are focusing on their work at all. At least Lee is trying to look nonchalant. Lucas is just staring right at us, looking mesmerized like he's watching fireworks. Regardless, Oscar takes the hint and leans back, but he keeps himself crouched closer to my height. Despite his best attempts, he's still having to look down at me. He's holding the teardrop now, and the gentle grasp he has is like a tiny glimpse into the softer side of Oscar I know is there, but I've... Ex is there because I've experienced it. That little side that other people don't give much of a chance. I meant it. It really is breathtaking. He scoffs at that, but I can see his smile widening further. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Even though it grows, it somehow feels sadder than just moments ago, like he's, like he's lost in a bittersweet memory. It's not something to ruin the mood, but it is noticeable compared to his usual demeanor. Pretty sure that's just glass. Nothing special, man. It's not just the design that makes it beautiful, but it's very clear it means a lot to you, and that's what 
makes it a standout. He considers that, and as his eyes look away from the necklace and towards me, I can feel them scanning over my body as if searching for something. I don't have to wonder what he's trying to find for long. Do you have anything you, do you, have anything you carry on you? My mind instantly remembers a few words on a screen, a single message I still haven't deleted despite the way it makes my phone weigh so much more. If nothing like that, I've never really had an accessory. I think you'd look really cute with an earring. For the first time since I've met Oscar, his flirting feels out of place like he's forcing himself to do it. Like he's trying to distract me so I don't notice something or so I don't pry any further. Oscar, are you okay? Ever since yesterday you've been acting strange. You don't have to act like nothing's wrong all the time. Things get hard for everyone at some point. Oscar looks toward the others for a moment, both of which are looking towards their devices in an attempt to act like they're not listening, before looking back at me with a tired look on his face. Listen, Wallace man, I don't really like thinking about negative stuff like that. I'd just rather not think about it at all, get it? But you shouldn't just push it all down and ignore it. That's just going to make things worse. But then he gives me a massive smile and gives a playful thump to my shoulder. It's soft. It's so gentle that I'm surprised someone with Oscar's muscles can even be that restrained. I've never been an emotional kind of guy. I know that's a bit weird, but it's just always who I've been. No need to change that now, right? Something about that doesn't sit right. I can't agree with someone saying that would rather not feel, feel things at all. It can't be healthy, but I can't just tell him how to live his life. He must have caught something in my expression, too, because his face softens and he looks at me with an amount of confusion I've never seen on his face before. It's like I'm the one who's being abnormal and weird here. You're so strange. Always trying to look out for me. You should just enjoy the eye candy and have fun. That's what everyone else does. He gives a resounding sigh that sounds booming coming from his wide chest, and he gives me another smile. This one more fragile than all the others. It's more of a peek through the cracks of his smiling mask. Okay, okay, you'll win. I'll tell you about this. He lifts up his blue teardrop necklace between our faces. I can see a distorted version of Oscar's lips through the glass. It makes his entire body look blue and wobbly like he's made out of water. But not today. It's not a fun topic, and I might need a few drinks first. I can't stop a smile from stretching across my face when he see and when he sees that. A gleam shimmers in the oceans of his eyes, and that fragile smile shatters into his wonderful full grin. Are you two done fighting now? Lucas's unsure voice echoes throughout the room. The only noise following it is a whisper from Lee before a look of understanding crosses the fox's face. Sorry, I thought you two were fighting. I didn't know you were flirting. My bad. And then, as if that's the tipping point, Oscar falls back in his chair, laughing while Lay, while Lee, keep calling him Lay, because I've been calling him Lee, like Lay for the entire playthrough, while Lee tries to keep himself dignified by hiding his smile. That leaves clearing things up to me. Lucas, we weren't flirting. Wait, we weren't? We were just having a conversation. He cheered me up. And he did not, and he did it not... And he did it not just by being himself, but he opened up to me even if just a tiny little bit. I don't know Oscar too well, but that feels very important. Speaking of a conversation, tomorrow I think I'm going around to the football field tomorrow and see if I can catch one of the guys who knew Conrad before we had the, before they have practice. You want to come with? You'll have a lot of hot guys. He flashes me a wink and I blur out the first thing that pops into my head without thinking. I'm pretty sure you're more ripped than most of the guys on that team. I'm not sure why I said that, and... What response I expect out of Oscar, but the way he completely beams, I think it's pretty clear that he's very happy with what he's hearing. I definitely buried my own grave. <laughs> but I'm hotter than them, too. Look at this! Oscar reaches down and grips the bottom of his shirt. He's about to lift it up when Lee interrupts without any hesitation. Oscar, not the time. That only causes Oscar to roll his eyes and stand up, forcing me to look up to maintain eye contact. Perspective is making his chest look even larger, and I will bet my entire life savings that he's doing this on purpose. You gonna come? What? Find the football bros. Find information on Badger Boy between all the hot eye candy. I think just finding the information is enough. The way Oscar's smile perks up at Lee's tone, I can't help but wonder just how well he knows how to push everyone's buttons. He seems to know how to get under Lee's skin especially, though I don't think the possum is particularly upset. Yeah, sure, not the staring at the boys part, but the gathering information part. Right, who needs to stare at guys when you got the hottest in front of you? He's about to walk away before he stops, and there's a moment where he glances at the diary, but only for a second before his attention is back on me. If what is in the di if what is in the diary bothered you, do something about it then. Less thinking and more doing. Give him a call. Thinking before acting is much less fun, and you always end up talking to yourself out of doing anything. 
It gives me a wink before walking towards the other guys, his thick tail rubbing along my neck before the sensation disappears completely. It's hard to think at all with the feeling of his short, coarse, coarse fur grinding against the skin of my neck. But in a strange way, he looks happier than he did earlier today. I hope that even just the prospect of talking about things took away some, took away some weight from him. Regardless of everything, Oscar's relationship with the rest of the group has improved. He was always on good terms with Lily and myself, but now Lucas doesn't seem to mind him as much, and there's an almost playfulness to the way Lee and him bicker, even if he still means it. I don't think he'll ever truly, I don't think he'll ever truly approve of him, but it's a start. Looking down at my phone, I open my mother's number and stare at it for a few moments before I get up and walk down one of the aisles. I'm almost in the clear when I see Lee's eyes staring directly at me. There's a moment that I'm worried he's going to stop, but he just looks down towards his phone once more. Being the quiet type is definitely a blessing sometimes. It doesn't look like there's anyone in this section. Looking at the books, I think they're about Icelandic history. I suppose this isn't a popular section, but that's good for me. I just want to make a phone call. Bringing up my mother's number, there's a familiar sinking feeling in my stomach and I begin to feel dizzy, but I push it away. I can't let that night stop me from calling my mother forever. It rings for almost 20 seconds before she picks up. She might be at work right now. Hopefully it isn't too busy. Hearing her voice through the phone brings a flood of emotions. A mixture of relief, warmth, and embarrassment. Hey, baby, what's wrong? I haven't heard from you in a few days. Everything going all right? My mouth feels so dry all of a sudden, and forming words is a lot harder now. After taking a deep breath, I'm able to pull myself together. It's going good. I just thought I should give you a call. We haven't called in a while, and I was scared I might be worrying you. I, I hope I'm not causing you problems at work. Oh, baby, no. We're just busy right now, and I'll always make time for you. It helps that you're... it helps that you're married to the boss. I'm able to hear her soft chuckle through the phone, and for some reason that causes all the tension in my body to fall away. It melts away like ice cream on a summer day, unable to handle that warm... that wonderful warmth. It certainly helps, and I'm always worried about you. I just thought you'd be settling in, and I didn't want to stress you out. Mom... If you ever need to talk, you know both your father and I are always here. Despite myself, I can't stop myself from smiling and my eyes from getting misty. There's so much I want to say, but nothing comes out of my mouth. It's like my voice has been stripped away. We love you, baby. You mean the world to us. I love you, too. I'm barely able to croak it out. The words are hoarse, and I can't stop the wobbling in my voice. I hope it doesn't worry them too much. So, what's bothering you? N nothing's wrong. I just saw something, and it made me want to call you. To let you know that I love you. Aw, oh, baby. You don't know how much that means to us. That includes your father, too. There's that soft chuckle again, and I can't stop myself from joining her. It's more somber now, and I can feel a warm tear wetting my cheek fur. After Marcus, you stopped talking to us as much, and we didn't want to push you, but we were scared we weren't, go we weren't doing enough. That causes my breath to hitch and makes my blood run cold. Surely they can't think that I blame them for what happened. N no No! You two were perfect. I just... I needed time. I... I think I still need time. Of course. Take as long as you need, but don't be scared to call us if you need us, okay? I won't. I promise. That's my boy. Now, have you made any friends? Yeah. I have. Hanging up the phone, it's like a weight has been thrown off my chest, and I can finally breathe for the first time in years. It's an amazement that I'm not, that I'm not heaving. It's just a simple phone call, just a tiny chat between mother and son. But it felt like so much more than that, like it had been the first time in a long time that we truly talked to each other. After all the hassle this diary has given me, I can't help but feel a little grateful for finding his, this little thing. I'm not sure I would have had the strength to call them otherwise. I wouldn't call it a blessing, but I am glad for it at this moment. It's strange just how relieved I'm feeling about the whole thing. It doesn't fix everything, but it does make me feel a lot better than about before. I'm about to head back towards the group when I notice something outside the window. Something very concerning. It's Lily. Except, she's not looking like herself. She's still talking on the phone, but she seems upset. She's covering the phone like she's trying to hide what she's saying, and the fur under her eyes looks wet. I wouldn't say she's crying as much as her eyes are watering. There's a solemn aura around her like this phone call is actively draining all her playful energy. It's so different from how she normally is that, for a moment, I think it might be someone else, but a... It's be someone else but a Shiba, a Shiba Inu wearing a yellow cardigan is too recognizable. And just like that, she ends her call, wiping her red eyes with her free arm, and I can feel my chest tighten because there's someone there, a friend, who needs my help.
bile rises up in my throat as the memory of that cold night on the beach floods through me. The salty smell of the beach makes me feel lightheaded. I have to steady myself on the bookshelf to stop myself from kneeling over and vomiting on the floor. When I look up, Lily's walking away along the side of the building. Her movements are stiff and she's still clutching her phone in her hand. She occasionally stops to take a deep breath and clean herself up. It's a sad, lonely sight. No matter what it takes, I won't let someone who needs my help go through things alone. Not again. Never again. With unsteady steps, my head spinning in a dizzying frenzy, I manage to get back to the others. By the time I arrive, I'm walking straight enough to hopefully not rouse any attention. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. Alarm Chan has made her presence known. I, guys, I want to also let you know that YouTube has given my channel access to Super Thanks. Super Thanks, what it is, it is basically a form of tipping. You get like a really cool highlighted comment with like a, a GIF or something. It's pretty cool. Um, it lets me see your comment more if you wanted to stand out a bit. And uh, it just helps me, it just gives me some money. <laughs> it gives me a little bit of money. Yep, my content will always be free. I'll never lock anything off, but you know, I'm not going to lie. Tips are appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!